to things that are unseen. It is no conversion at all where the affection of the heart has not been changed. Amen. Hope transforms your desires to heavenly things. The devil succeeded in tempting Eve to want the wrong thing, and hope is now succeeding in recovering men to want the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. A man is actually the sum of his desires. His desires is what makes a person who, who they are. A man is the sum of his desires. If he wants the things of this world, what is he? Worldly? Yeah. Amen. If he rejoices in the hope of glory, he's redeemed. Amen. He's saved. If Whatever has your desires has you. Amen. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. A man is the sum of his desires. It is a peculiar work of hope to make men who rejoice in what they cannot yet see. It's the peculiar work of hope to make a people who rejoices in what they cannot yet see and what they do not yet possess. Now, is that not peculiar? Yeah. Hope is making a peculiar people who pass on the here and now in preference for the then and there. Hope is constraining. Hope compels the soul. Hope is what will empower you to exchange the lesser for the better. To trade in the ashes for beauty and the mourning and mourning for the oil of joy. Hope is what moved Abram to leave Ur of the Chaldees and to dwell in the tents of Canaan. It looked like Abraham, it looked like he left something for nothing. Because he, le he left his own country, left his own family, went to the land of Canaan, and then he sojourned the rest of his life. But it was hope that drove him to do that. Amen. And Abraham has no regrets for it now. Mm -hmm. The Lord promised that he would inherit the land of Canaan, and he yet will. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hope is what constrained Moses to leave Pharaoh's house for the suffering of his brethren. Why would, why would Moses leave what the world had to offer in Egypt for suffering with a slave nation. It was hope. Hope constrained him. Hope is more powerful than fear. Hope is more powerful than obligation. Hope will make you do more than what law could ever make you do. Because hope constrains from within, not, and the law constrains from without. Hope is what made Saul of Tarsus reject his father's heritage for the sufferings of this present world. It was hope that constrained Paul to do this. <clears throat> this is not mind over matter. The, the, it's not just a matter of making the right decisions and having all the right information. This has nothing to do with the power of positive thinking or a psychological paradigm. I guess there is a spiritual paradigm. Hope gives you reason to forsake the world. Mm -hmm. right. Abraham leaving his country, Moses leaving Egypt, was not just a paradigm. It was not pretense. Hope actually pushes the world out with better things. Mm -hmm. You can't be an empty vessel. Yeah. That's not an option. Mm -hmm. Either the world will push eternal things out or eternal things will push the world out. But you will be filled with something. That's right. amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Hebrews 10.34 says, For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Now, it's not, it's not that the Hebrews were glad that somebody robbed them. Yeah, that's right. It's not that they were, they were happy over it. They, they took it joyfully, knowing that they had better substance that couldn't be robbed. Amen. Their loss didn't hurt them. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did lose something, yeah. but their loss didn't hurt them. Yeah. It didn't unsettle their hope. They were not distressed because of, what they, because of the possessions they lost. Praise God. They did not question God. They were not upset with God. Mm -hmm. They knew that they were still rich toward God, even though they were destitute in the world. They took joyfully 
the spoiling of their goods. See, their, hope, their, their desires have been converted. We're given this word in Colossians 3, 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Things above, things that are heavenly. Set your affection on things that are heavenly. Set your affection on the eternal things, on things that are not seen with the eyes. Set your affection on things that faith can see. Set your affection on the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Set it there. Set your affection on, on the inheritance which is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Set your affection on the inheritance. Set your affection on the book of life where your names are written in heaven. Set your affection there. Set your affection on the great cloud of witnesses who have already finished their course and are now witnessing you running yours. Set your affection on them. Amen. Set your affection on the promise that the former things will pass away and that you will learn war no more. Set your affection on the time that you will beat your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning hooks. Set your affection on that and see what happens to the world. Set your affection on the wedding feasts of the Lamb where you will sit down in the kingdom with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and set your affection on that day when the Son himself will gird himself and come forth and serve you. Isn't that something to set your affection on? Set your affection on the day that every man shall have praise of God. On the day when he shall write his new name upon you, set your affection on the day when your enemies will know that God loved you. Yes. Amen. Set your affection on the day when you will take your armor off, when you will drop this robe of flesh. Take your effect, set your affection on the day when you will put off this tabernacle, when you shall be like him, and when the devil will trouble the nations no more. See, there's a lot of things to set your affection on. There's a lot of things above to set your affection on. <clears throat> now faith is the substance of your hope. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There cannot be a sustained joy in anything without substance. There cannot, you cannot have a, a, a healthy joy on something without having the substance of what you are rejoicing in. If there is no substance to hope, then it's only imagination. The object of our hope is actually what God has promised. Hope is not something that we create. Hope is something that, that is given to us. And that hope is, here's an example, this is what Peter said, we, according to his promise... Look for new heavens and a new earth. Why do we look? Because he promised. We look according to his promise. Not that he tells us to look and so we look. We look because he's promised. We only have hope because God has spoken. We have hope because God has promised. Our hope is the child of his promise. God spoke and hope was born. That's the hope that we have, and he gives you faith, and your faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. So we do actually possess some of what we're hoping for. Amen. Amen. You couldn't have joy in it any other way. How do you know you want to go to heaven? Do you know that you want to go to heaven? You've got to have some of heaven before you know you want to go. Heaven does not equate to just getting out of here. Remember something Brother Michael said it was profound. He says some, some people, they just want things to be normal. If things were just normal, then they would never pray. That was, I'm sure is a paraphrase of what Brother Mike said. But heaven's not just normal life. It's not just all my troubles are gone. It's much, much more than that. Now, the complication to rejoicing in hope is that we do not yet see what we hope for. Now, the resolution to rejoicing in hope is faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So the foolishness of preaching is that we're preaching about things we can't see. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping for things that we don't yet possess. We've given up the whole world. Now, they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, I'm putting all my eggs in his basket. Amen. 